Welcome to another video, The One Good Road here. Today I want to give you a basic beginner's guide to using Google My Maps. I want to show you how I've created various custom maps in the past and custom route planning because I have extensive knowledge over the last several years where I have used Google Maps and other alternative mapping software to map out my trips, my rides, my travels, and to share that with other people. And essentially it is a way to embed your own custom maps within Google Maps, which is one of the like most well-known mapping softwares in the world, right? And what's really cool about Google My Maps is you can customize and put any icon, any route, any map you like, um, and you can embed that on top of the software when you're using Google Maps, or you can you can embed these these custom maps onto your website, basically. And that's what I have done on other websites I've made. So that's the really cool thing about it. And I want to show you how I make these maps. But I thought personally, I want to start from the beginners and then work my way in a sort of series, a set of series of videos where I'll show you the more advanced features later on. So you could like, for example, load this map specifically on your phone and then you've you've got basic route planning and you can add way markers and stuff like that. It, it, it is really amazing what you can do with this software. So I'm gonna start off with the basics, the beginner level. This is current for the year 2021 and I might make an update video later on like maybe a year down the line if Google Maps adds new features or if it changes, etc. So I'll leave a link down to the Google My Maps beginner page. Like this just gives you some brief overview of what you can do. So you can make your own custom maps. You can share and collaborate those maps with other people, which is really cool. And you can take the map anywhere. So you can load it on your tablet, your smartphone, and then you can use it while navigating a city. You can use it for navigating mountains. It, it is truly amazing what you can do. I'm going to show you the basics, show you how to make your own custom map, and we'll just we'll just get started. So, essentially, we've got the the once you load the Google My Maps like homepage, you have to have a, a Google account to do this, obviously. And I'll leave a link down below where you can click through. But you just type in Google My Maps and it'll show. Then we are presented with maps that we've previously made. You can also share maps with other people like this, for example. These are all like other maps that other people have made and what I've made in the past. Um, and what we'll do, we'll, we'll create a new map on the top left here. So keep in mind, I'm gonna be showing you how to do this on the web version or like on a computer. And then later on, I'll show you how you can actually even do this on your phone which is pretty cool. It's it's very new doing it on a phone, so it's not as well feature rich as this web version, but uh, for now, it's easier to make custom maps on the web version. So I'll, I'll show you the basic UI. Uh, you've probably seen tons of different videos already on this, so I'll just kind of run through the basics pretty quick. Um, and then I'll show you how to make a custom map later on with a lot more advanced features and how I load that on my phone, etc. So we'll give the map a name on the top left. Mm, Google My Maps for beginners. I think that's probably the, the best name save. And all of this is being saved into your Google Drive account. So you don't need to worry about if you're gonna lose data when you add stuff in. So on the top left, we've got this sort of legend thing on the like a box card on the left and we can we can add layers into this legend now the downside of google my maps is that you can only have 10 layers i don't know why they've chose this maybe it's just to reduce the amount of load that they have on their servers but that's just the way it is we only get 10 layers we can share it with other people and we can preview the entire thing once we're done on the, on the top right of that, we've also got a, these three little dots, which brings up a bunch of other, other options. We can um, load a new map, copy this map, open a map, which we've already made, 
We can delete this entire map. We can set a default view for the presentation, um, like of the overview of the route. We can embed on the website. That's what we want to do. And if we like, we can either export this into a KML or a KMZ file, which then we can load either into Google Earth to create your own like um, animations, if you want, for your your own routes, for example, or you can use that for presentations, or you can just simply load that on your GPS, your Garmin, or your smartphone, and then you've got the whole KML file on your phone, which for route planning is truly amazing. And it's nothing like, you know, the old school paper maps that I, I actually really like as well, but what you can do with like a tablet and a phone these days while, while traveling is just amazing. And you can do the really old fashioned way of just printing off the entire map from there. So that's all of the basic options there. We can add layers, right? So we will be focusing on Andorra, which is right here in the Pyrenees mountains. And we're just going to do a bunch of like roots and like different shapes that we can do different pins and stuff like this. So what we can do is we can either import from our our Garmin, our actual KML files. I'm assuming most people don't have access to that. But for example, I'll give you just a brief overview of this layer. So we can select from your device. I've already got a KML file right here on my computer. I'll open that, upload. Now that I've imported the KML file, uh, it'll give me all of this data within this layer. Now this can look a bit overwhelming. That's because personally I've already made this KML file before. This is all of my routes that have been recorded on my, on my smartphone or my GPS unit, you could say. Um, these are all GPX files that I've strung together with another app, which is called MapHub. Don't worry about this. I won't get into this in the advanced features. This is for beginners, but this is where I imported all of my GPX files and I made a KML file. Right now I've, I've imported them all in and we'll zoom back in onto Andorra. So what could we do from here? I would like, for example, to add a marker for some of the highest mountains in Andorra. I would like to draw maybe the outline of the country, um, which is surprising that this is a country, isn't it? And maybe we could do directions too. Like if, let's say if I'm staying in Toulouse we, or Barcelona, for example, um, how far is it to drive there? And then I can share that with a friend. So these are all of these uh, walking routes that I've previously done in the Pyrenees. I'm not going to put them on the map. It'll be a bit too overwhelming. So let's focus on getting from this town, <laughs> the biggest city in like Catalonia, from Barcelona to Andorra. This is my sort of uh, local area for me, the Pyrenees. I'm lo located around there. And let's say I want to get from the airport of Barcelona to the country of Andorra, for example. So we'll go into the top left here. We've got search bar and below that we've got a few little bits of tools. Not many, but there's a few here. There's a measure tool, which is useful for measuring the area, right? So we can draw it out and we can get our distance. Another feature we've got is the driving directions, which I'll show you. We can draw just a straight line and draw individual lines. I'll show you that in a minute. We can select items and we can undo and redo things from up here. So let's go to driving directions. Let's say I want to go from Barcelona's airport, aeroport de Barcelona. Yep. And let's say I want to get to the capital, Andorra la Bella. Okay, that'll just give me a very quick, easy, Google Maps algorithm for like driving from there to there. I don't recommend using the driving system or actually any of this, these transportation navigation modes within Google My Maps. They're very basic. You can manipulate them a bit. Like I could say, I want to take this major highway instead of this other one. Um, I find that, that there's a certain amount of waypoints that you can add and then you can't add any more. I think it's something like 20 or 30. So in my opinion, that's when I would recommend using an alternative app called Ride with GPS. Ride with GPS is for, it's predominantly for cyclists, but I, I highly recommend it. Uh, you can use it for 
simply hiking and you can use it for if you're overlanding or driving. I think it's a really good customized app. It's It has a freemium kind of free trial kind of thing, but you, you, you can use the whole app essentially for free. And this is a, a massive route that I did back in 2018 or something uh, from one side of the United States to the other by bicycle. I did a whole documentary series on this. So that, that I recommend for beginners. I don't recommend that right now, but I do recommend using that instead of just using the basic navigation mode for route planning. I think it's a bit basic personally, but if you want a quick overview, um, it's really simple. So we've got our route, for example, we've, we've, uh, we didn't even have to make a new layer. It just created that layer automatically, which is great. So let's add another layer. Uh, what we can do is let's say when I arrive in Andorra, there is a bunch of different mountains around the area that I would like to go up. Um, just hypothetically, I mean, I've been up some of them before, but hypothetically, let's say you want to do that. So we'll, we'll title this uh, layer like mountain, mountain, come on, MacBook keyboard, um, mountain peaks, save. And I'm not gonna import because I don't have any data for that. I want to make it within Google My Maps. So for example, we can either add markers or we can click on them individually. So I could click on that individually. This is a peak. Uh, the Coma Penderosa, which is one of the highest peaks in Andorra, for example. I can add that to my map and bam, I've got a marker. Let's say I want something a bit more customized. Okay, well, I want to be able to see a bit more information about these mountains. I can't really see it on the standard base layer. This is when we get into other base layers. So on the bottom left, we've got a base layer map. And there's different ones as terrain, for example, which most people know and familiar with. You can have a bit of customizability. If like, for, if you live in Morocco, for example, in the deserts, you can have a, a sort of desert theme. There's different themes, essentially. Um, there's a night mode, which might be useful for cities at night, for example. Um, just try them out, see what works for you. I really love the satellite mode, which comes from Google Earth's data. I think it's fantastic. Um, what we will now do is we will find some peaks, basically. So I can go to the search bar. I'm going to type in peaks. Search nearest, search in this area, okay? So now it's searching in this area for peaks in the area. Sometimes the search engine is not that good because I can actually see there's a peak here that's not listed, for example. I will type it in again, peaks. Search places in this current view. There we go. Now I'm getting them. Sometimes it's better to just zoom in. So now we're getting all these different peaks in the area between the border of France. And I really like the look of this mountain. It's got a lake over here, which is kind of cool. And I believe I've hiked not far from here once. Uh, Andorra, like the Pyrenees has so many great hikes. I highly recommend it. So we can add this one to the map. We'll add that one again. Um, I'm just going to close that briefly. And now we've got another one added to the list, for example. So we can either view that within Google Maps directly and get more information. We won't do that for now. And now it's added a GPX or a GPS, sorry, a GPS coordinate right there. And that's essentially all the, what these uh, markers are. They're just GPX coordinates. That's all they are, or GPS coordinates. So that's really handy. We can also customize it. We can customize this marker. Um, let's make it blue. I don't find the colors very customizable. I know that it looks like there's a lot, but I prefer having like a hex value and then you can select all sorts of different colors. I will give you a very quick brief overview of what the heck I'm talking about. So if we click on this route, um, which is through, this is on Map Hub, completely different app for mapping, which I do recommend, but Google My Maps is just more well known. So we can change the color of this route and have a completely different customizable color. I can have any color I wish, which I prefer. And I don't know why Google My Maps doesn't have this yet. So that's something that, that's why I use this one instead. Let's go back into the Google My Maps. So we can also have more icons. We can choose different icons. Uh, we've got a parking symbol, which could be useful if you want to have like a parking location for when, when you're about to go up to the mountain, for example. 
and I'm gonna leave it as a peak so we'll go into more icons there's so many to choose from it's pretty ridiculous I will type in peak it should come up no maybe mountain yeah here we are there's a mountain peak great so I'll and that's in sports and recreation there are so many to choose from it's really handy and now I've got that listed I'm actually gonna make that black maybe yeah I'll just keep it and there's a sort of darkish color so there we go there's our peak right and that is how you add a custom uh, a custom map marker that's what they call it I would actually call it a GPS like point basically um, and then we can also do that for the other ones we can also on the on the left we can actually customize the entire style of the instead of going through and having individual icons for every individual one or every individual Mac marker, we can change the uniform style of the entire thing. So now everything will have the same style. I can go into the stylize, other icons, I can go back to the one I had before. I can select that to be, look, you can literally see the changes happen as I click, right? I can have it as yellow or orange or whatever, ta-da. And now it will show me those two and they will have the exact same color, basically. So that's really handy. And now when we zoom out, I can see those two peaks. So those are two peaks that I might might want to go up. So let's say I've arrived in Andorra La Vela and I want to know where I can actually start my hike, right? And I do recommend using some other maps instead of Google My Maps, but this will give you a really nice, quick, glanceable information. So let's type in parking and see what it can do. I haven't tried this before, it might be a bit limited. So it's a bit limited from what I can see. Um, let's go back into base map, satellite. Yeah, there's a car park there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a marker, click that, and I don't want it to be in the same one as this. So let's let's take that out which again, we can only have 10 layers. Again, don't ask me why, I, that's just the way it is. Now we can drag them out. It's a bit tricky to do. Let's go back into individual styles. And then I'm going to like hold and drag. I'm gonna take that out. That's how we can swap between two different layers. Like if one layer is getting too many points in it, um, or you have too many layers, you can basically reduce the amount of layers by dumping everything into the one layer this isn't fantastic because it means like i'm just showing you this is a preview of, of another layer of a different completely different map um with all my recorded routes of hiking routes in the pyrenees so i can turn that off and they're all gone which isn't great that's just a limitation of google my maps i wish that it wasn't like that but that's just the way it is right now Again, it, it might be useful to make an update video like in 2022, 20, for example, like a year from now and see how it's progressed, right? So anyway, we'll go back into this layer. We've added a marker and I want to create a different style. I want that to be the parking and I'm going to have it as black. Okay, and then we'll go here and we'll call it parking, for example. And that's it. So I'll zoom back out and we'll go back into the individual styles. I want those to all be uniformed like that. And I love using satellite imagery, but it can be a bit overwhelming to look at all that data like that. So it might be useful to have the terrain. Yes, it is. That's way better. So now I've put it back onto the terrain layer. So there we go. We're starting to really get a very useful map. I mean, you have to, let's say if I spent another hour or even less than that, maybe even half an hour doing this, you can you can sort of predict what you're going to do in that area. Um, and it's a very powerful tool. There's a lot of different things you can do within this. So I was, I've shown you how to do basic route planning, which again, you can either do driving, you can do cycling and walking, and they're very basic. I don't highly recommend Google Maps just for your navigation. And then a cool thing is that you can, you can share all of this. So we'll get into that in a minute. And we've got our map markers, we've added those in. I'll show you how to draw a line. So let's say we've got a hike that we wanna do. And I'll zoom in here. I know, I know this area, I've been here before, which is handy. 
This is when it gets a little bit advanced and I can get that that might be a bit overwhelming for some people. So we've got, we've got our layer and draw a line, draw a line or shape. I'll show you the shape thing briefly. Um, so we'll go from here and we'll draw a line like this, okay? This can be a little bit slow if you do it like this. This is when navigation can be, for some people, a bit boring like this. I'm gonna zoom out. I hope to God that it doesn't add a point there. That's great. I'm adding the line like that. Okay, so there we go. Let's hit enter. I want that. And that'll be the rough hiking route. So, oops. Hiking route, for example. Save. Again, I know for a fact that there is a route going up there, but you can't see it on Google Maps very clearly. Again, you can go into the base layer and change it to satellite imagery, and you might be able to find the tracks. Sometimes that's quite useful for roads that are not marked. Um, generally, it's best to follow a valley. This comes with like, this, this is quite advanced, so I won't go into that. So that's essentially how you draw a line, and you can draw very custom routes if you want, instead of doing car routes or navigation for biking or walking you can draw out your your own routes within google my maps again i recommend other software for that i would recommend using ride with gps or using the maphub.net it's way better in my opinion but again if you want it to run within google maps which has a much larger database that's when this is way more useful for that sort of thing let's change the color of this one it's a bit strange i'm gonna have it as like a more bold color and we can also change the width so style width color uh, width make it something a bit bold so you can see it from a distance width of the line there hiking route it even roughly tells us the distance that's so quite handy and you can add images or videos into this which is quite handy so let's let's just see about that image url now your photos um let's um uh, for the sake of simplicity, I'm just going to pretend that that's the, that area. So I could add in a photo from that area. This is like hiking the mountains, right? And then I can click save. And now I've got like an image that I can add. And then you can have a slideshow within that, etc. Which is handy. You can add videos. You can add YouTube URLs, which is really handy. There's a, there's a lot of different options. So let's just close that. So we're getting a pretty useful sense of how I think you can use Google My Maps. And I think we are entering into the last phase, which is to draw a shape. So to draw a shape, I'm gonna go to draw line or shape again, which is the, the right icon here. And I'm gonna add a new layer so that it doesn't get too confusing again. And everything will be drawn and added to that layer. And everything's being saved every time we make one or two adjustments it will be saved so let's say i want to mark out the the rough borders of the country so i can draw a line going around like this okay and then to finish it you have to click on the original dot you have to click on the original point that you started and there we go we get a polygon shape uh, let's call this Andorra. Simple. Save. Uh, it'll tell us the square kilometers that it takes up. It'll tell us the line, that entire line's route and how long it is, which is really cool. And then we can add a style on that. So what are the colors of Andorra? It's kind of like a bluey or a red kind of color, isn't it? Let's make it blue just for now. Whatever that color is. So we'll just call it Andorra save tada and then we've got the basic outlines of a country and i think that's great so we've already got a couple hikes we've mapped out where the parking is we've got the capital city you could do hotels from that as well so you can plan out your entire weekend or your entire week trip depending on what you want to do it, i think this is a really cool feature um we'll call that the i'm just going to call that hiking routes because there might be multiple hiking routes. And I can also bring in my old data, which is the routes I've already hiked before. So that's how you import, draw, and add way markers or like uh, pinpoints on a map. And they're all customizable. I've added a, a couple extra markers down here. We've got the hotel that you could theoretically stay at. 
at Barcelona, for example. And then we've got a, the airport marked on there just to make it a little bit more clearer on where that is. So let's say I want to preview and share this with other people. So let's set the default view so that when people are presented with this map, that's what it will look like. So we go to the top right there of that card and set the view. Now the, the view is set like that every time we load it. We could change the base layer of the map, but I don't really want to do that right now. Now we go to share. You need to make the sure that you share this first before you preview um, because otherwise people won't be able to look at it. So you click enable link sharing and public on the internet so anyone can find it and access it. So we go to public and this will be the link and it is saved onto your Google Drive system, which is great. I think it's super amazing. It's so cool what you can do with a lot of the Google ecosystem. You can add other people, etc. but we'll just leave it as that. Then the last thing that I'd like to do is to embed it on my website. So let's preview this. What does it look like? So what have we done? We've imported GPX and KML files, which we can toggle on and off on that layer. We have drawn out a very basic route going from the airport to the country of Andorra. If you truly desire to go by car or whatever, or by bus, we have added some mountain peaks that we want to hike up in the mountains, maybe. We've added some parking routes. We've added some hotels. We've added the airport, super easy to do. And we've got the hiking route, which I added. And I'll zoom in on that because we can't really see it from a distance. And finally, we've also added a shape of the country, which is quite handy for marking out like a territory or a farm or something like that. There's lots of different use cases for marking out areas like that. How do I embed this on a website? And we've already shown you how to share it. So you can either share it and embed it from the preview page here, or we can go here and go into our editor on Google My Maps and then embed on my website and we will get the code. There's not a lot of coding that you need to do. You simply just copy this iframe here, copy. And let's say we've got a website that I've, you've already have. For example, this is a Google sites website. You can make them for free. I'll leave a link down below if you want a free website like this where you don't need to worry about hosting and stuff. It's great for previews and things like that. You can also do this within WordPress as well. So I've already got two maps added here, but I will go to embed here. I've got the code, HTML code, paste it in here. You could adjust the height, the width. I'm going to make it about maybe 800. I feel like that will fit better. It'll give you a quick preview of what that will look like. It looks a bit odd when it's all squished in like that. So let's just insert it and then add it into the website. I've noticed the more maps that you add into a website and embed, the, the more crazier it gets and the harder it is for the computer to manage all of that. So below here, I also have some screenshots and these are all bicycle touring routes I've done and also the Western United States as well. And then I added videos below that. So there's lots of different things that you can do when you're adding this onto your website. This, this hopefully will give you lots of different ideas. So now we'll go to the top right and I can publish this website. Your site has been successfully published. Hooray, let's view it. Okay, so we've got the header in the middle there. We've got my, my top menu bar, and then we've got the larger map, which my world map takes up tons of data every time I load it, because there's so many individual KML files in that. And here we go. Here is the map at the very bottom. So now we can preview this, and, and now that it's embedded onto the website, we can see all the work that we've just done. So we've got those imported GPX or KML files in the top right for all of my hiking routes that I've done in 2020, roughly. I've got this um, Andorra shape down here for the country to mark out the country. Uh, we've got those parking places. We have got those peaks that we might want to go up. And we've got the route that will be from the airport and that hotel. And you've already got an entire itinerary that you can share. So again, we can share that with other people. And this is embedded right onto our website. We've also got on the very top of this, this basic website, we've got this overview of my all of my routes. And the more stuff you add into it, the more trickier it is to load it on a slower internet connection. So just keep that in mind. So there you have it. 
that is a beginner's guide to using Google My Maps and all of the features that I know of within this whole system. In another tutorial, I want to show you how I utilize using other software, other web-based apps to then add and enrich the mapping system because I do find Google My Maps is a bit basic and the, using these other bits of software really adds a lot more data that's more useful to people, I feel. And then again, there are some alternatives. You don't have to use Google My Maps. You could use this Map Hub, for example. And that's how we create custom, that's how I've actually made all of these custom maps and all this route planning. Definitely subscribe for future content. I might wanna do another video on how I create an animation of a route that you've previously done and how, I, how I've done that in a, in a previous video on one of my Cathar documentaries, hiking documentaries. And I drew out a route within Google Earth. So definitely have a look at that in the future. Again, we've got route planning, custom maps, and some advanced features that I'd like to get into. But for now, that is essentially how you can create your own custom maps within Google My Maps. Hopefully you found this helpful.